Hello everybody, hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor here, we're back with another One Leads episode. Make sure you're checking out the content from yesterday. Yeah, we've got a bit of a, chat, a, a January transfer shopping video, which I think you'll all enjoy as well. We've got a, a One Leads from yesterday as well, a rumour mill. Make sure you're checking out all that good stuff. We've got a Generation Leads coming up with my old man on the Patreon. We've also got another transfer video live on the Patreon as we speak. So make sure you're checking out all that sort of stuff. If you can hear a bit of noise in the background, it is my bloody washer doing my nutting. But there you go. You're going to have to just deal with that. Apologies. Um, but we're back here with another room bill episode. We're going to slash it in half. And we're also going to speak about, um, you know, some bits regarding the Swansea game. Uh, shout out to my new Robbie Fowler jersey. Um, I'd show you Fowler27 on the back. If you want to check all that good stuff out, check out uh, the Instagram and the Twitter for all one leads updates which includes a Robbie Fowler long sleeve Premier League edition but yeah um let's get into the stuff today that all, all the big the big news but straight away Noah Lang surprisingly has spoken about Leeds United again apparently Leeds had agreed a fee of 40 million quid for Noah Lang and Marcelo Bielsa turned around and said absolutely no way he didn't believe he could do as much work off the ball as maybe a Victor Orta did and the bodies um, that were important at Leeds United at the time, the powers at B, I should say. And yeah, Leeds obviously didn't make that acquisition. We were all, I remember being gutted, especially on the rumour mill after that one because we've been speaking about it all summer and Lang was was really keen on coming to Leeds United. Obviously, he's played in European competitions since then. But um, yeah, at the time, I believe it was Club Bruges. Leeds didn't get that deal done and we were all a bit frustrated at the time. I remember being massively frustrated myself because you'd seen all the compilations of Lang and you thought to yourself, bloody hell, this would be a real jewel in the Leeds United crown obviously we later went on to sign Rafinha who would all, almost be that profile and what a, an intelligent signing that was a bit of kudos to Marcelo Bielsa for that one not saying yes to Lang but saying yes to Rafinha for, for a much lower fee as well but yeah um, fascinating to hear that Bielsa just turned around and said absolutely not that's not happening in in, in the January months uh, in January and, and summer months it was but yeah Lang was gutted he said he was exhausted at the end of the transfer saga but I think what we learned at the end and, and something that I learned as well at the end of Marcelo Bielsa tenure is you always trust Bielsa and maybe at points I didn't do that and you know you do feel that the Noah Lang saga would probably have been a little bit of like the McKenney saga where you know not a lot of work off the ball not a lot of quality and ultimately a signing which didn't do Leeds good at all in the long run and uh, Marcelo Bielsa turned around, uh, you know, in the, when that signing was supposed to be getting signed, sealed, and delivered, and he turned around and said, "Absolutely not." Uh, quite a weird one. This obviously it's not it's not funny because you know br the break in the law, but very very unusual ones. Both players are out on loan. Christensen and Brendan Aronson are supposed to be appearing in Harrogate Magistrate Courts for two separate offences when it comes down to speeding. Really weird, really uh, fascinating court case. This one, obviously, because. You know, it's a civil matter, but both are on loan. One, you know, respectively in Rome, the other in Berlin. Very, very odd. Um, and apparently, back end of December and back end of January, both are expected in court. Um, they should be in court for the offences on the football pitch playing for Leeds United. But by the by, uh, yeah, both are expected in court for speed awareness, um, you know, pull-ups, which is very, very interesting. I thought that'd be a little bit of news today. He said that he believes Charlie Cresswell could start for Leeds United on Wednesday, obviously with Farker not wanting to completely blood um, Pascal Strauch into it after his injury. I don't think that's going to be the case whatsoever. I think, if anything, you probably see Ethan Ampadu go at the back over Charlie Cresswell. He is not interested in Charlie Cresswell whatsoever in this Leeds United setup. Hence why he's going to be leaving in January. Could he put him in there for maybe a little bit of a glance into the January months? As in, look what, look what Charlie can do. Let's rise his stock a little bit here by putting him on the pitch. But I think Swans is a crucial game now. It's a massive game with everything that's going on. Leeds United getting a point against Rotherham, which should have been much more. I think Farker's going to see this as a very important game, and I think Pascal Strauch starts. I think that's that's no, I don't I don't, dis, I don't agree at all there with Graham Smith. I think it's obvious that Cresswell's probably going to be loaned out or sold in the January months, and I don't think he's going to be starting for Leeds United at all on Wednesday. What do you guys think? And this is a bit of a controversial one, everyone. It's just something that I wanted to put to you guys, and I know that a lot of people will be commenting on it when it comes to Leeds United in general and and where this individual stands. But would you let Patrick Bamford go? in the January month. Now, I think when we're looking at this, we've got to look at Patrick Bamford's longevity at Leeds, where he's going. 
what is the plan with him? You know, I know a lot of people have coined the, the, the phrase charity FC when it comes to Leeds United and Patrick Bamford, but is that what we're becoming at the minute when it comes to the striker? For me, Leeds are going to go for a striker in January. And if we were indeed to go for a striker in January, what does that say about Bamford? It says that he's not good enough. Simply, he's not good enough. And if the club may maybe keep hold of Joe Gelhart, send him out on loan, if would there be a possibility then that Leeds would let go of Patrick Bamford to facilitate another striker coming in at Ellen Road? Because if Perot is there, Rutt is there, if that's what you're calling him now, as you know, essentially a number nine. And obviously, Perot, a lot of you are calling for to play up front, can act as a number nine, I guess, even though I don't agree with it. That leaves Patrick Bamford in a precarious place at the minute anyway. But if Leeds are able to coin in on Bamford and a club is going to come in for him, would you guys let him go? I 100% would. I definitely, definitely would. And I think, as I say, if that is to facilitate another striker coming in in January, and that is a realistic proposition when it comes to wages being off the books, you know, is, is, is a team going to be able to afford Patrick, Patrick Bamford's wages at the minute? Probably not. But obviously, we know when we came down from the Premier League, that was cut. So is it going to be a realistic option for a team to come in for Bamford in the January months if Leeds do in, in indeed put him up for sale? It's definitely something I'd look at. And another one, another, a light-hearted one, everybody. Is Chrysensio Somerville one of the best bargains that Leeds United have ever signed? And I'm putting that out there because I think for the amount Leeds United paid for him, which was about a million quid, the return that we're going to see for this guy, profit-wise, if we, we do indeed sell him, we know he's not going to be at Leeds United his entire career, is going to be astronomical. I think this guy is the main man at Leeds United right now. He's the main dude, the main body, the main person who's going to get us out of trouble, the main attacking presence at the minute. I think you saw that against Rotherham. They were completely all over Christensio, some of them. The reason behind that, and we're seeing that in numerous games this season, is because he's the main threat. He's the main outlet. He's the main guy, as I've just mentioned. He is nothing short of exceptional in this division. And I've never felt more certain that the drop down for Christensio Somerville's career at Leeds United to the Championship, him being the main guy, is the best thing that could have happened for his career because I fully believe that this guy's going to flourish at whatever level he plays at now. And finally, guys, it's discussing the Swansea game. Massive game for Leeds United. We've got the debrief tonight where we're going to be looking through everything when it comes to Leeds United going forward, but it's going to be massive. This is going to be a massive game. We have to get back on winning terms. Ipswich are struggling. Shout out to um, the Second Tier podcast who have almost just you know, said that the Leeds result this weekend, I'm paraphrasing, but it's the worst result ever. Um, and Leeds are showing inconsistent form, even though we've got an unbelievable, we've won six games in eight. Um, and then Ipswich have drawn to Rotherham, drawn to Birmingham, lost to West Bromwich Albion, but that it doesn't fit the narrative, that does it? It doesn't get the clicks. But Ipswich are the ones faltering, barely beating Swansea 3-2 as well in that four that have played. Ipswich are wobbling. And it's up to Leeds United now to really apply that pressure. Maximo Park, shout out. We really need to do something. And I think I would be looking at making changes. I'm not saying Dan James is a bad player. It's not that I don't like Dan James. I think William Yonto is in some really good form at the minute. I think it would be an unusual shout because they won't expect it the Swansea. And I think that that pace, that real dynamism, which is going to take two or three Swansea players out of it, is a really good port of call for Leeds United. Listen, James is an ex-Swansea player. Will he be up for this one a little bit more? You'd hope so. Perot in the same mould as well. But I think that this is going to be a big, big game um, for Willing on. So for me, I would be starting him. I really would, would be. Another change I would make would be Firpo coming out, Byram coming in if Byram is fit enough. I'd obviously be starting Pascal Strout. I just don't think Firpo's it. And I know he's coming back into it. I know a lot of you guys will like him from his appearance on, on, the, on the Leeds United podcast. But once again, we're not a charity. I do not think he is good enough, unfortunately. And I think we could really, really, really make... Um, you know, if you can play your best 11, you know, you start your best 11. Consistency breeds success. And I think with Nonto in there, with James in there with respect, but with Nonto in there, I think it gives an elevation of quality. Byram in there, I think that's obviously steady at the back. If he, if he is able to play and has recovered from that hamstring, you don't want to be rushing that back, you know. But once again, Leeds United need to be looking at these positions 100%. In the January window, you know, the left-back position has to be sorted. We cannot have an inconsistent buyer throughout the entire season. And then Firpo coming in, it's just not good enough. I just don't think he's there at all. You know, even when it comes to championship level, he was speaking about how hard it is at the Premier League and the championship. You know, on the Leeds United podcast saying the, the wingers are the main folks and it's not like that in Spain. It seems like he's still struggling to adapt. I know he's only been back a couple of games, but you can just tell by how he's playing. It doesn't always, it's not always stats, but the eye test when it comes to junior Firpo is that he's just not up to it. 
Um, so I'd be putting Byram in there again. It's going to be a tough one for Leeds. Um, you know, they've, they've brought in Yannick Balassi, the 35-year-old experienced winger, which is a mad signing, but they brought him in on a free transfer. He's going to be available for this one. You know, you need to have, we need to be on it, really, Leeds, for this one. Swansea have had a bit of an indifferent start, uh, an inconsistent start as well. Um, but, you know, the likes of, you know, um, Yates for this one, um, you know, obviously Grimes is going to be available as well. Probably their main focus is for these games. And I just think it's going to be a tough one for Leeds, but we need to be on the money. We need to be consistent. And guys, we're going to be back with a bigger preview this evening uh, from around about six or seven o'clock with the debrief. Stay tuned to One Leeds. Make sure you're checking out the Patreon. Please like this video. Really appreciate everybody. I'll see you tonight. <laughs>